And welcome back to Hannity. Now, during a recent interview, the L.A. director for the Center for American Islamic Relations made some outrageous remarks blaming America. Watch this. Let's not forget, as we speak today, ISIS has killed 95% of the victims of ISIS, the Muslims. the Muslims themselves. And let's not forget that at the forefront of fighting ISIS today are the brave Syrian people who are fighting on both fronts, the, 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 the barbaric regime of Assad and the barbarism of, of ISIS. So we should give credit when credit is due. We actually have left the Syrian people alone as they fight and in battle with, with, with ISIS. And then we complain and say, what are the Muslim people doing to... to, to to root out terrorism and extremism. Let's not forget that some of our own foreign policy as Americans, as the West, have fueled that extremism. When we support coup leaders in Egypt or other places, when we support dictatorship, repressive regimes around the world that push people over to the edge, then they become extremists, then they become terrorists. We are partly responsible. So this is, terrorism is a global problem, not a Muslim problem. And the solution has to be global. Everybody has a role in it. No, America is not partly responsible for terror attacks. Pretty unbelievable. Now, you may remember, keep in mind, back in 2007, CARE was designated by the FBI as an unindicted co-conspirator for supporting Hamas in the case of the United States versus the Holy Land Foundation. Here with Reaction, author of The Complete Infidel's Guide to ISIS, Jihad Watch's director, Robert Spencer, the president for Act for America, Brigitte Gabriel, and Indianapolis area imam, Mohammed Sadiq is with us. Uh, once again, uh, Imam, here we have it again. Islamic terror, Muslim terrorism. And well, why, put it, why does this keep happening? Well, first of all, I wouldn't put it in those terms, Sean, but let's say with the name God, most gracious, most merciful, we offer our condolences. Well, she pledged to the her, she pledged her allegiance the to the Islamic State. And, and in the wars. She we pledged her allegiance that. to the we, Islamic well, that's State. That's not the report that I heard. I heard that they. That's not the report you heard, Brigitte. Did you hear not, what I heard? I, I, I did not hear that report. I, that's like exactly that. what I heard. Uh, this is Islamic terrorism, and it is Islamic terrorism rising all over the world. And we in America have avoided talking about Islamic terrorism because we do not want to offend anybody. We do not want to hurt anybody. Well, it's time to throw political correctness in the garbage because right now, those who are afraid to report suspicious activities almost have blood on their hands because the fear crippled them from speaking the truth. And it's about time we start speaking the truth. Ro the Robert, the Robert, say hang on, okay. Mom. We got other people okay. on the show. Robert, okay, I'm Robert sorry. Spencer. I'm sorry, Sean. Robert, let me bring you into this. Now, you have studied ISIS. This is part of their MO. They want to radicalize. They want to use the internet. It's believed that they use the blueprint from Al Qaeda, their online magazine, to build the pipe bombs. And they, were, interestingly, and I think in a scary way, they, they were going after these IEDs. What does this mean? Well, what they have is a comprehensive plan, Sean, to sow blood and mayhem in the streets of the United States. They have a very detailed guidebook for Muslims in the United States on how they can mount terror attacks exactly like the one that we saw in San Bernardino. And to blend in before they mount the attack with the larger population, they instruct them explicitly, don't carry around the Quran, don't go to mosque, don't appear to be an observant Muslim. And we will call upon you when it's time to strike. What they hope to do is to overwhelm the American system of law enforcement and intelligence with so many of these plots that the system will collapse, and then they will be able to take full advantage of that. And we need to now, do we need to reevaluate, Robert, in this society, the cultural clash and whether or not our immigration, probably, our immigration problem, our immigration laws, our visa laws, do we need to now go back and reevaluate? Absolutely. There needs to be a drastic overhaul. Many jihad terrorists have gotten into the United States through the visa waiver program, which basically eliminates checks from 38 countries, as well as the refugee and re re refugee resettlement and asylum programs. These have been taken advantage of by terrorists going back to the 1993 yeah. World Trade Center bombing when the blind sheikh who masterminded that bombing and was Brigitte, an asylum seeker. Your reaction to that? I mean, are we going to just let Syrian refugees in when our intelligence officials say that some may be radicalized? Brigitte? Uh, no, we shouldn't. I mean, uh, the, obviously, there is no vetting system good enough uh, to let these refugees in. We have to protect ourselves. We cannot let these refugees in. We do not know their background. There is no counter database that we can compare uh, the names on it. And at this point, knowing that ISIS is in the country and knowing that ISIS wants to come to the country, there is no way we can let them in. And also, Sean, we need to do retraining of our first responders and FBI agents, those who were trained that jihad basically is yoga. Uh, 
because remember, Obama purged all our counterterrorism training manuals from any reference to jihad, Islamic terrorism. All, all these right. new agents we need to understand exactly what we are dealing with. Thank you all for being with us. We have much well, more gee, on this busy news night tonight.